My name is Ariella Oppenheim. I live in Jerusalem and uh, I do research at the Hebrew University, research and teaching. And the subject we talk about today is the interplay between two transcription factors, two major transcription factors, SP1 and P53. I got into this subject through my research on a small DNA virus called SP40. I became interested many years ago in molecular biology and regulation in eukaryotic cells. And I thought that SP40 will be a good tool to study. That was before uh, many of the technologies that are available today were available. This was in the 70s. So <clears throat> the two transcription factors that we talk about were both discovered using SP40. That was the best molecular tool at that time. SP1 is a transcription factor that operates in many, many different uh, promoters, and so is P53. So the interesting part about them is that they both attach, bind to similar consensus sequences. One of them, uh, in fact, in the SV40 promoter, they attach to the same sequences, more or less. One of them activates the antigen, and the other one suppresses the antigen. That was known for many, many years. Now, it was very clear why we need to activate the antigen, or the virus needs, because otherwise the life cycle of the virus will be stopped. The antigen is the major early regulator. But it was not clear at all what P53 is doing in that part. Uh, one idea of Carol Previs was that maybe it works to turn from the late from the early phase to the late phase. The early phase is the antigen synthesis, the late phase is um, the antigen is shut down and other proteins are synthesized. But there was no, it was not clear and there was no way to show it. Now, a few years ago, not so, maybe 15 years ago, we became interested in the entry of the virus into cells. What happens when the virus enters? And we found that both SP1 and P53 are synthesized. In fact, we found that P53 is activated in response to SV40 infection very early in the infection before the antigen is synthesized. In fact, all our studies centered around the time before the antigen is synthesized. And in order to limit ourselves to this part, we used both the antigen um, SB40 wild type for limited amount of time, or we use virus empty capsids. We start creating virus empty capsids again years ago because of our interest at that time in gene therapy and gene delivery through these capsids. Anyway, coming back to P53 and SP1, P53 is a major tumor suppressor. It was discovered as a contaminant in uh, during purification of the antigen, it binds very tightly to the antigen. And uh, SP1 is considered to be an oncogene because it un activates many oncogenes. So what is the story here? We found in SP40 that P53 is part of the host defense, and that's why it's activated very early after transcription. And then SP1 sort of, sort of uh, competes with P53 on binding to the T antigen promoter, and if it wins in the competitions or those cells in which it wins, they become infected. Now, since we are talking about tumor suppressor and an oncogene, it was very interesting to see how they work against each other in tumor promotion or the other way in tumor suppression. But it turns out that they don't only work against each other, that happens, but they also work together. And the anti, not the antigens, sorry, SP1 is required for activation of many pathways that are regulated by P53 and probably vice versa. 
And even for apoptosis, which is a major function of P53 in tumor cells, it's either stopping the proliferation or even leading the cells to death, SP1 is required. This is very surprising. Now, the how they how they interact and how they interact against each other or together, this is going to be a complex and a long-range um, research. Right now, we are trying to see on a small scale whether if we inhibit one of them specifically, what happens to the other one? And that's also a complicated issue because um, both of them activate a protein which is called MDM2, which leads them ubiquitin, ubiquitin ligase, it ubiquitates the protein and leads them to degradation, but not in the same way. And uh, that's another element in the in the system. So this is our interest as far as this part of the system of the entry of SD40 in general eukaryotic regulation, let's say, in cancer and in, in the normal life is conducted. <music>